Hey everyone, and welcome again to my audio-visual channel. I am Gabriella Handel, a draftsman, and the host of this show, A Conversation About Art, during which I look for the meaning of art and beauty through conversations with colleagues in different artistic fields. Today, I bring you episode 28, and I will have this conversation with painter Stephanie Deshpande. I don't know how to pronounce that. I will ask her when I talk to her. Turns out Guno's episode, the previous episode, was actually episode 27. Let's say my hair was too similar to episode 26, and that is why I got confused. This is episode 28, and I am almost at 30 episodes, which is kind of crazy to think about. Thank you for hanging out and sticking around as I go ahead with talking to more people about art and beauty. Let's see how this, how far this thing goes. If you'd like to support this podcast, liking and sharing this video is great, and so is subscribing to my audiovisual channel. So then let's go ahead with the episode, and thank you again for watching. All right, so, uh, Stephanie, uh, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, but in my mind it's kind of it's kind of dish, dish pande. Welcome to my oh, podcast. Good. Okay, good. <laughs> Welcome to my podcast, a conversation about art. You are episode twenty-eight. Please tell our please tell our listeners and viewers who you are and what you do. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. This is a lot of fun. Yes. yes. Um, so, and, and you pronounced my last name well. It's Deshpande. Okay. So, so I. So let's see. So. Oh. <laughs> All right, all right. So anyway, so I'm a painter. Um, I like to work on somewhat narrative paintings. Um, they're more, I, I like to delve into like the psychological aspect usually of what's going on in people's minds and, and what shows through um, and capture that in my paintings. Um, I also like painting florals work a lot. So I kind of, I try to, just balance, I sort of go between, back and forth between both. Okay. Um, but, oh, and also, I mean, I, I first studied art at UMass Amherst, and then I studied painting at New York Academy of Art. What? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> so you did too, I. Yeah, we're, we're alumni. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I, was, I think maybe I'd see you at an event, but I, I don't think I, I haven't run into you yet. So I think, uh, I don't know, hopefully soon. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I love New York, New York Academy of Art. And I guess that's, that's pretty much to my, my history. Okay. Okay, so um, if you don't mind me asking again about your lesson, just because I'm curious, mm -hmm. where, you know, where is it from? Well, so my, um, I got married at one point and my, it's an Indian last name. So I, I, oh. I kept it even yeah. though the marriage didn't last, so. Okay. Yes, interesting, okay. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm really not super familiar with, mm -hmm. with, um, uh how how can i say it like the way the like the way it sounds i guess the mm -hmm. language so i'm not super familiar with like what names correspond to to the language and stuff so like i i mean you know and not i'm not a linguist or anything yeah so so i mean not, not that i would have been able to necessarily recognize it otherwise but i was trying to guess you know um i mean that makes sense because of the sh i feel like there's definitely sh often like the sound at least in the mm -hmm language anyway all right so uh, thank you <laughs> for letting me digress a little bit i was just curious okay. um all right so so all right so your medium is oil painting mm -hmm. right okay so then how did you start your relationship with oil painting and i mean why why did you end up oil painting and why have you continued oil painting all right well for a couple of reasons so I basically, I started early on when I was in, you know, in probably, I mean, high school, maybe a little bit before that. Um, my mother signed me up for art classes when I was in elementary school. And I just sort of, I just right away started veering into the direction of oil paint. 
I remember there was one of my favorite like first paintings. It was sort of a break breakthrough still life. It was just in like a sepia color um, oil on canvas, mm -hmm. and and I just I just felt like it was very easy to work the paint and pull off the lights and keep the darks um, with oil. Yeah, with oil. Okay, and and then. I, another reason is just because I like the durability of it. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a kind of sloppy person at times, and I don't <laughs> trust myself to yeah. like, I mean, I guess nothing has ever happened. Like, you know, my sketches are all still in my sketchbook, so I shouldn't have like an irrational fear of them getting erased or uh -huh, something. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I just feel like I like the durability of oil on canvas because you know, some, even if some paint gets nicked off, you can just, you know, touch it up. Mm. And probably the third reason I have a little prop here is, is my natural state of drawing looks somewhat like, like this. Uh -huh. Like it's, it's just very scribbly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I can do better than that, but um, it's, you know, some people, yourself included, you know, really can just, they just draw so beautifully. Like they touch the pencil to the paper and it's like everything is, is just so beautiful. For me, I'm just more inclined to, to paint because I think it's because I see things more in um, like the values and colors. Mm -hmm. I mean, I actually don't even you know, some people feel might think that it's easier to paint just black and white, but really I don't, I've never had too much difficulty just paint and value at the same time, mm -hmm. or like the color and value doesn't throw me off too much. So uh, I think that's, that's pretty much it. Oh, oh one other last yes. thought though. I, I do, I really do aspire to draw better. Like recently I've, my couple trips to the art supply store, I've gotten some fine charcoal, I've gotten some supplies so I can carry them around with me and um, try to draw more often. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even in some circumstances, like if I have like a, a online painting thing or a model posing, I'll start out thinking, okay, I'm going to draw this. And then I just, yeah. I'm like, no, I can't. It looks too beautiful. I have to switch to paint. So, yeah, yeah. so it, it's just, I just never end up drawing as much as I'd like. Um, wait, so then, so then just now you said it looks too beautiful and that's, that's why you have to stop. What looks too beautiful? The, the drawing you're making? Oh, oh no, more like the, the model say. Oh, I, so I just, I, when I see the model with like, you know, all the values and colors, I just, I'm just like, uh, you know, it's also, it's also surprisingly more time consuming for me to draw. Like for me to paint, I can just put a couple things and really it, it starts to come together a lot faster Yeah, yeah. than with drawing. It, it tends to stay more at a scribbly stage for longer. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. So then, so then. So then for you, for, so then you're, for, for you, you know, it, it feels like mm -hmm. you're not doing justice to the model's, model's pose when you draw. Is that right? Right. I mean, part of it could just be practice. Sure. But. Okay. No, that's interesting. And that's a really valid point. Cause I mean, um, I, I think, I think, uh, to some degree, I also feel that way. And I mean, not that I've, you know, I, in my case, it might be like the other way around, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't paint very often at all. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, I, I can, I could see the feeling of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm not saying what I want to say or I'm, I, or, you know, like the, the familiar or, or like, I mean, in, in my case, the familiarity with the medium is a, a is a big factor because I've been using graphite specifically for a really mm -hmm. long time. It's, it's like basically the only, almost the one thing that I've, been constantly drawing with my whole life which is mm -hmm. several decades decades now and it's like you know you can't you can't beat that familiarity basically it's like it, it will take several decades decades more to accrue the same familiarity with another medium mm -hmm. and it's like I can't help uh be, because of that factor it's like it makes sense that I would 
just immediately gravitate to the the graphite to to draw whatever it is um okay all right so then um would you say that those same things have would you say those things those same things you listed are the reasons for which you have stuck with oil this entire time or is there something else you know, as you have used the medium that have, mm -hmm. is there something else that has kind of like cemented the, your, your, uh, staying with oil, like, uh, other things that have kind of reaffirmed your relationship with the medium? Uh, I mean, it's really just those reasons I stated that, that I keep on sticking with with oil. I mean, I also, I do, I do love the way it looks. Mm. Um, but I think it's just because I, you know, similar to the, to the way you stick with a pencil and charcoal. Um, I'm just, it's just comes a little easier to me. So, so every, every time I think of a new painting idea, it usually tends to be in paint and then I might think, yeah, I just, I just never end up thinking, oh, this would make a, a good drawing. Mm -hmm. I sort of get there in terms of like maybe after a portrait society conference and I see some gorgeous drawings, yeah. I'll be like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try it. I'm going to like yeah, do contagious. A, I'm going to do like a final sketch. That's going to be beautiful. But like I, then I just get sidetracked start working on mosaic tiles or something <laughs> oh right so so these mosaic tiles i saw recently uh, -huh. uh on, on instagram you posted something about them right so so yeah. would you say that is a an, another medium of expression that you dabble in uh it's probably a distraction really mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Pro procrastination <laughs> not not really it's just i guess for many years um i was sort of you know i i since around like 2010, uh, like, especially when my daughter was younger, I would, I would pretty much just paint in my free time. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't even make too much time for like cooking or like, like I just felt like there's all these different type of craft things that might be fun to work on, mm -hmm. but I just, my time would be divided between you know, life and then painting. Mm -hmm. So, so for that reason, I like now I've just been, I've just been indulging myself a little bit more with different um, like home projects. And I have to say, like, I, I do, I really like the craft of like carpentry and things like, I like renovating things. So it, it's something to the side. I have to actually just, I got, I had to update my basement over the last yeah, few months. Yeah, I saw that also, yeah. That was so, cool. Thanks. So, yeah. so I had, I really enjoyed that. And if I had another life, I would definitely like to just get into like carpentry projects. But I ha after a couple months of, of not painting as much, I have to like shut that off mm. so I can, I can focus on painting again. So, yeah, yeah. But I'm just trying to squeeze in. I, I just want to get that mosaic tile done for a little floor project. Mm -hmm. And then and then I, that's it. But I, I really, I like doing the mosaic tiles too, so. Yeah, I really think the whole um, carpentry construction type stuff, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's really cool that you, that you do it as a hobby often. Um, I, I wish I knew a little bit more about that stuff and I wish I could uh, like take part in it somehow more often mm -hmm. or in any way at all. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like those are really valuable skills that, uh, they were not taught to me in school. Um, right. I don't, I don't know about the education system here. I mean, I think there's mm -hmm. a wood shop or shop or something. I know this yeah. from movies. I don't know. I don't actually mm -hmm. know. Um, but, but, um, yeah, I feel like those are really valuable skills that, everyone should at least have some knowledge knowledge of uh, but, but but it's really cool that you have that you have the opportunity to practice, yeah it, you know? it's it's great because you really build on the skills mm. and if you have the right tools 
then it makes it pretty easy and you just keep on building and and then you know something that you might have thought was impossible a little while ago then you realize that like oh i could use i could do that so yeah. I, I do like just expanding those skills yeah for sure and i mean it's not it's not like they don't overlap with with uh with your you know the fine art aspect of you because it's like you probably now have some kind of knowledge to be able to frame your work or to make the stretchers for example because you know that's de there's definitely overlap there with carpentry yeah that's that's true i was thinking about that but um you know again i think tools come into play like with the with frame like i, I do i love it when some artists make beautiful frames mm -hmm. but uh yeah, I, I haven't figured out how to how to do that yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, all right. So um, talk to me a little bit more about the, uh, the subject matter of your work. Um, mm -hmm. I'd like it if you elaborated a little on the psych the narrative psychological paintings mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the flower paintings. Mm -hmm. So so I, I wonder and I'd like to know why do you think why do you make the flower? Why do you paint flowers? Mm -hmm. And in terms of the narrative psychological paintings, uh, what you know, it, what do you what do you mean by okay by psychological? So basically, a lot of my artwork is is kind of autobiographical in a way, mm -hmm. and also based on like metaphors. You know, it's it's. I was actually looking through like an inventory of my work um, and the years. And when I was uh, painting different things, and mm -hmm. it's just very reflective of of what's going on in my life. So, but, and then, so basically, when I'm trying to like sort of process certain things that are going on that I find intriguing, uh, that's when I tend to focus more on the figure and. You know, slightly more narrative psychological paintings but but if my life is is pretty calm and i'm just working on like gardening and things around like i'm not near too many people <laughs> <laughs> then i then i tend to like i don't have like that sort of emotional content as much and i uh, okay. i just i'll just paint flowers um so there's like, you know, there's less psychological things going on in, in flowers for me. It's, it's more of a, it's like a nice thing because I'm just focusing on the beauty and, and also, you know, practicing my skill working from life and, and just, just trying to capture that beauty that's right there, in the flowers. Okay. All right, that seems, that, that, that makes, that makes sense. And it's also interesting that, that you, like uh, effortlessly, would you say, kind of like gravitate to one or the other, where you want to talk about the whatever might be happening in your life via paintings, mm -hmm. versus when you know everything is great or nothing, nothing out of the ordinary is happening, then you gravitate back to painting flowers. Does that yeah. seem right? Yeah. Th there is one thing though. I didn't paint flowers until probably 2015. Okay. So. And then I was, I basically got, I think what encouraged, what got me started was just my love for some of the like floral painters, like um, probably Michael Klein was the first painter who, whose artwork, I mean, I just like couldn't get enough of his, his floral paintings. Mm -hmm. And it was just that like, that just like yearning for like just this I was so blown away by the beauty of his his floral painters paintings that got me started trying to do that myself so it's taken a little bit of time because like my first if I look back my floral paintings are really you know they started out pretty weak but you know now I've gotten more of the hang of sort of capturing them a little bit better okay um why do you think, why do you think, um, I don't remember the artist's name that you just said. Michael um, Klein. Michael Klein, yeah. Why mm -hmm. do you think his floral, floral work specifically uh, drew you in so much? And you used the word yearning as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what do you, would you elaborate on that? Well, so, 
So I think it, his his painted his floral paintings are so subtle, um, and yet so realistic. He has. I really should look at. I need to look at them again to help me like describe them better. Mm -hmm. But um, there's. But what what I like is just that they really. It's not like he's drawing out individual flowers, and yet they're just they're just so beautiful and lifelike. Um, but yeah, I think you know going to your topic of of beauty. What is beauty? Mm -hmm. I tend to think also like what does what does beauty cause and or and for me it tends to be it's like when I see something beautiful it just it creates such like yearning and desire that's that's almost painful mm -hmm. and so I have to try to figure out a way to you know like if I were an art collector I'd probably be content with just collecting work that I think is beautiful. But mm -hmm. but something in me wants to, like it's not enough to just appreciate someone else's work. It's like, I, I wanna kind of try to do it myself. Um, okay, so, so you don't, so you don't want to, so the yearning part is that you want, I mean, in the case of this, this uh, client's paintings, mm -hmm. you want, um, you don't, I mean, from I'm trying to paraphrase, like what I mean, what we mm -hmm. to see if I understand. Mm -hmm. um, you don't necessarily want the painting itself, but you want to try to do what he, to like do what he's doing in a way when he represents, mm -hmm. when he conveys, when he represents the flowers in his paintings. Like you want, you're, you're trying to, you're yearning mm -hmm. to convey that in your own flower paintings. Uh, would you say? I mean, maybe it, maybe it, it, it's not as much like once I start working on my floral painting, I'm not really thinking about like His anyone work. else's, yeah. but I think it just inspires me to like, try it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not sure why, but it just, it just triggers something in me. Mm -hmm. That's like, oh my God, like, I, I just love that so much. And then, and then then I just want to try to like, like join that, join mm -hmm. that like ability. Yeah. That, that, that kind of has happened to me in a couple cases with, with painting in general, like in, so after I graduated from New York Academy of Art, um, I got a little disillusioned with the art world, hmm. you know, yeah. cause you know, it's like maybe I, I had my work in one gallery, but it, nothing was selling. I lost, mm. I lost contact with a lot of the people who I went to school with. And mm. I just, I didn't really, I was like, well, what, you know, it's not like, it, there wasn't anything, I didn't know what to do with just, I sort of put painting on hold. And, but anyway, what got me back into painting again, was, I think when, when I, when social media started, like Facebook came around mm -hmm. and I started to get reconnect and see what other artists were doing. Um, I just felt such like, like a desire to be part of that again. Mm -hmm. um, so then that was around like 2010, I just really started. I was like, oh, I don't want to be left behind. Like I just want to yeah, be yeah. part of these artists or painting. Uh, so, so that's a, it keeps on coming up every once in a while, but it's like that sort of like yearning that motivates me to keep on like pushing more. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me, I mean, that, that specifically reminds me a little bit of being at the school basically mm -hmm. during, the M, during the MFA where, um, or at least that's what it was like for me when I was there for the, for the two years mm -hmm. with, you know, with the, the second years and the, then when I was a second year with the first years and everything, there's, the, mm -hmm. I mean, what the way that it felt for me was very, very, um, there, it, it, it's not competition. The mm. feeling is not competition. Um, but at the same time, the impetus of all the other people in there doing their own work and chasing after their own vision, you know, whatever it is mm -hmm. that they're chasing after, 
mm-hmm. that encouraged me without right. you know without not necessarily without the without there being any kind of comp- competition no no kind of uh, you know like in the movies or whatever uh, right that kind of right stuff. so it was a very positive it was very positive so so I can totally understand wanting to be a part of something like that and yeah. finding that by looking at the work of our colleagues on social media like uh, having that feeling as well um because because it definitely is one of the faces of art and i totally Mm -hmm. understand why you would other with some of the other faces of art be also Mm -hmm. Mm disillusioned disillusioned like you were saying because that's actually i would i I think it's one of uh one of the reasons for which i'm doing the podcast it's like Mm -hmm. i i don't like the face of art that i had been have been seeing so far which is you know all the uh, i don't know I don't know the pomposity and mm-hmm. the the sarcasm and the irony mm-hmm. and the shock and mm-hmm. and the bananas and the uh, mm. cans of of uh, cans of artist crap and mm-hmm. you know like this kind of stuff that it, as far as I'm concerned isn't just not art or don't do not get the the honor of being called art you know like that kind of stuff so so you know, I was tired of that, seeing that. I was mm-hmm. tired of dealing mm-hmm. with that. And mm-hmm. it's like now, it's like I really like the idea of seeing, of looking for that feeling that I, I had in school yeah. uh, by, by looking at it, at my colleagues' work on social mm-hmm. media. That's a really, mm-hmm. that's a really good way of thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we, know, we know how uh, detrimental social media can be depending on the view one has of it. So it's like really good to have that view that 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 you're having that it was inspiring rather than stifling you know well that was that was my 2010 outlook (laughs) (laughs) that's in the past 20 10 years later (laughs) no i i i was actually like around that time i would when i would talk to people i'd be like no it's wonderful like Mm. re-inspire me i felt you and and actually i think like the last few years, I've really been burnt out with yeah. social media. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I just want to block it all out, work on projects. Mm. Um, but, you know, I mean, there is always it is always good to see other people's work and it is nice to connect with people, but it can just be too much. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. No, I mean, and I, and I agree with you. It's just that, so for me, it's just that I'm, I'm personally trying to change the way that I see yeah. Uh, social media in general yeah. because uh, I don't want it to kind of take over everything in my life right. like men- mentally I'm like worrying about uh, I mean I'm trying to not worry about oh not being productive enough and the work that I'm making is not good enough for social media it's like oh it's not mm-hmm. gonna get enough attention or engagement mm-hmm. or whatever it is mm-hmm. uh, and I also understand that and I'm trying to trying to cleanse that relationship and bring the control back to me yeah the user of the tool it's like you know it's a tool like any other tool that you know for carpentry or whatever and painting mm-hmm. and drawing mm-hmm. uh it it does it doesn't have to kind of overtake my mind and my thoughts and just yeah. spill into my life you know so it's like I, I effectively post seldom um i mean i I do post in stories more mm-hmm. often mm-hmm. um but but i you know i just um I ha- I've been able to work myself up to like not looking at it on at all on the weekends, for example, mm-hmm. and it's like really w- very uh, it's it's crazy how light my mind feels. Like yeah, light. yeah, yeah. I have to say it, it. It is nice to just have that to just break away. Yeah, you know, especially I think that's why if you, I mean, painting it's it's easy to sort of break away from the phone as well, but. Um, but yeah, it's definitely refreshing to just get away from it all. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so uh, let's get back to talking about nice, nicer things. And mm-hmm. uh, Miss Deshpande, please, uh, what is art in your opinion? So the way I see art is, I see it as a way for how to like view the world. It's it's like. So you have the world around you and it's a way to like process it and, and sort of, and then spit it out to sort of view yourself and see things 
more objectively. Mm-hmm. Like, I also think that's true for like, for portraiture or paid commissions. I mm-hmm. feel like if someone, I mean, there's a whole lot of things involved in that, but, but I think part of it, part of the, the reason why people would want a portrait painted of them is to sort of see like, how do people view me? Mm-hmm. And, and also if, if they don't like the portrait, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, which is possible. Cause I think, I think if I had my paint, you know, every time I have, you know, people sketch me for some, you know, if I pose for people, I was like, no, 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 that's not the way, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. not the way I perceive myself, but I still think it's, it's like a natural curiosity to see, you know, how do other people perceive mm. you? Um, but yeah, I, I see it as a way of just, of processing the world and kind of like, you know, during the day you have, you, you go through the day and then sl- during the nighttime you sleep and you process mm-hmm. and you like heal. And then in the morning you wake up refreshed. Mm-hmm. So I, I think to me, that's the way I sort of see art as just a way to like, to sort of process things and then just put it out there. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes um, that makes a lot of sense, and I feel like it's consonant with what you were saying of um, your figurative work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because because you were saying that when whenever in your life you're having some kind of issue that you're trying to work through, mm-hmm. then uh, painting 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 it, I guess that issue is helpful too. Yeah. Would you, yeah, would you, um, I guess you already went a little bit into that, but if you would go and talk to me yeah. a little bit more about that. Yeah, just, just one thing that kind of comes up, which might not be too important, but like when I, when I used to like Sargent's work, like that was one of my early influences. I always wanted to do work that was more, like I love the beauty of his his work, but I always wanted to have more of a narrative, sort of more psychological rather than portraits. Mm. Um, but so your question, I'm sorry, your question was about how, how I, pro- how the work gets processed more. What was, can you repeat your question? Yeah, well, um, I, I, I guess I also kind of forgot a little bit, which is kind of yeah. embarrassing, but um, I guess I also would like to know how how do you make the the work your paintings m- psychological? I mean, because um, you know, do you, would you say that there's some things that you deliberately put in the imagery, like a facial expression, uh, an object? You know, how how would you say that you make them psychological? Okay, so they're not. So I once I wrote a little article for. Um, Oil Painters of America blog, mm-hmm. and I—I I was my article was kind of about that. Um, I got kind of criticized by one person who commented saying, "Like, well, if because what I was saying was, I don't feel like it's necessary to have everything explained to people." Um, and he sort of. Damn it! Oops. Wait, wait! Don't talk! Don't talk! Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> So he was oh, sort of saying out. how, well, like it's pointless if people don't understand what the painting is about. Uh-huh. And because I, because I'm talking more about like personal symbolism or memories or metaphors. And I just think it's the, the emotion that makes the painting like impactful, not mm-hmm. necessarily like the meaning, like I don't have to have a painting that everyone can look at and understand the meaning. I think it's the motion in it that's more is what I'm going for. Mm -hmm. So, so I, and, and again, it's things that I might be thinking a lot about, like the, the painting behind me right here. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I, I spend a, I've been spending a lot of time, um, like I have the, I like having this need for like isolation in a way, yeah. <laughs> like, like I'm very introverted when it comes to um, like, like I'm, I like being social, but I need like, for most people, I think it's like, they could 
be much more social. But for me, I need like three weeks of just like working on projects to mm. like one social event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the process of doing that, like, you know, like I, I made my, I sort of took some time with like home decor, like decorated my like tabletop in my dining room. But the thing is, I don't have, except for occasionally like a social group with friends, like it's just like me <laughs> yeah. and, and my daughter is like going off to college. So the thing is, so I sort of contemplate that a lot. And I had my daughter before she went off for, to college, I had her pose in that painting. And when I was looking at it again, um, you know, I was just thinking like, you know, like it was kind of, it seemed, it seemed very fitting of what, of what I, like sort of the conflict in me with with sort of wanting to do everything like for having guests in a way mm -hmm. but then needing so much time to myself yeah. that, that it's kind of pointless <laughs> <laughs> but anyway so I and I liked I just happened I, like my daughter posed she you know I took like a lot of pictures of her and I just really liked her gesture and you know, it, it really seemed to to convey something about my state of mind mm. these days. Um, so, so that's why I mean, like, I think I tend to think artwork. People are going to project onto it what sure. their issues are, what their yeah. feelings, and most of my paintings do have like something that ties into what's going on in my life at the time. But it is somewhat personal, somewhat self-indulgent. Mm. And, and that's, and I, I'm okay with it like that, you know? Yeah. I mean, well, that's, there's definitely something to be said about the visual language of the individual, mm. meaning the artist versus the visual language of a group of people Mm -hmm. that may or may not be the same country, the same culture, or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever, with the same, whatever kind of group it is, you know, mm -hmm. um, because it, you know, we, we know, at least to some degree, that for the Renaissance and, like, those times, they, with all the religious paintings and everything, they talked to the populace mm -hmm. that way because everyone had the same visual language, mm -hmm. so much so that they were able to tell biblical stories to people who didn't know how to read via mm -hmm. paintings, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, it, it, um, I feel like that is practically impossible now because, mm -hmm. um, because now everyone, and I, I mean, not that everyone didn't have their own visual language back then or mm -hmm. whatever, but I feel like now the visual language is a little bit more individualized. Mm -hmm. um, because at least, I don't know, um, you know, maybe, maybe you can call it the West, quote unquote, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. In like our sphere, where, where we are, um, you know, it's very common that you move away from home. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you don't live, you know, you stop living with your family, you start making your own, you know, with your parents and stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, lots of times people don't stay in their town. Sometimes they do whatever. But like the thing is that that the consistency of that visual language is mm -hmm. different now. And mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I'm, I'm just uh, I guess I, I muse about it because I remember having conversations with classmates mm -hmm. um, that were saying like, yeah, you know, if you paint this into your, your drawing or painting, mm -hmm. uh, people are going to understand this or they're going to understand that. And, and it's like that kind of statement makes zero sense to me because mm -hmm. we don't have the same visual language. Not every, you, you can't guarantee that somebody is going to see the same thing that you intended when you're right. making the work because yeah. it's a, that's, that's a completely different person. There's right. so many variables involved when they're looking at the work. I mean, it, it kind of ends up being that everyone sees whatever they want to see in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, in that sense, maybe it does make sense for you to explain what mm -hmm. you mean with your work. And I mean, you know, that's a, I feel like that's an argument in favor of, of talking about what you mean with a work in a way, you know, right. if you want to give that information to the viewer. Um, I don't know, I just, I feel like that guy or whomever criticized yeah. your article is kind of dumb uh, for being like, you don't have to explain things, that's whatever. And it's like, you know, you can say something similar about jokes 
uh, it's common it's common to say that explaining mm-hmm. a joke uh, ruins the joke, but to me, it makes it mm-hmm. funnier. It's like it's funnier right. to elaborate why that joke was funny to me, and then I laugh more, and it's yeah. great, <laughs> you know? I, you know, and, and it, the thing is that even though I think everyone has their, you know, imposes their own vision, I do think that, I think the power of painting, though, is that something some of the original intent intent should show through you know i i don't think it's gonna like you're gonna look at it you know you might not know the exact thing that's happening but i think there's enough you know visual cues to at least get a sense a sense of the motion um so so I guess it just it, it depends on to what degree the artist wants to convey the information issues. Yeah, I mean, yeah. no, I, I can totally get on board with that as well, because we're after all, we're not that different either. Yeah. You know, I, um, I, I have, I've been thinking recently with the with the conversations that I've been having mm-hmm. with people that the feeling elicited by something beautiful mm-hmm. is very likely the same, if not at least very similar from person to person and across cultural whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, I mean, you know, uh, because if, if there's anything that we have in common amongst ourselves is like the physical body and like the wiring, the brain, the feelings, the, ele- the electrical charges and all like all of these things, those things are physically very, you know, very, very similar between, or if not the same from person to person. And it makes perfect sense that um, I mean, like you were saying, the visual cues are common enough between uh, just everyone very often that mm-hmm. for sure that information can to some degree be transmitted via imagery because it's like with the painting that you have behind you, mm-hmm. I mean, I feel as though the person is has some kind of conflict. It doesn't have to be like a huge conflict, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. but they're, you know, like, I don't know, like some kind of... Uh, anxious frenetic feeling sort of I mean maybe mm-hmm. it's not that much but and you know that that seems to coincide with what you were saying like the conflict of wanting to like what you were saying of wanting to make your dinner table pretty but not but hardly ever having every, anyone over like that feels right. contradicting yeah um, yeah and, and also yeah. just just the fact that you know it's it's a, a table setting with two people you know at least two plates that are viewable there Mm-hmm. And yet there's just one person there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You know, you might wonder, you could speculate, oh, maybe she's waiting for someone or, you know, but, but I just like that concept. Sure. Yeah. That. Um, but, you know, going back to what you were saying. Um, so I, you know, I, I, I like the fact that, that you have this podcast and I, I was in, I was listening to several people and it's very interesting when some people, um, you know, sometimes you hear something that's, I felt like um, Martin Campo, oh, Campos, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I felt like when I was listening to him, what he was saying, I was like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I've been, I've been mulling over. But, <laughs> that's awesome. Like said, said very eloquently. Um, but one thing is, so I've been, so I like it that you, you're thinking about these things, because I was, I've been walking around sort of mulling it over a bit. And you know, on one hand, you know, beauty is subjective, you know, to a degree, otherwise everyone would be doing the exact same thing, Mm. but there is a lot of, there are a lot of similarities to it. And, and like you were saying, everyone has a body. I, what I was sort of speculating about was that, you know, of course there's similarities because we all live in the same environment and like Mm. in the same world. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's like, you know, we might look back at a beautiful landscape from, you know, hundreds of years ago and be like, isn't that funny? You know, it's like, they, <laughs> they think that's beautiful too. And yeah, I think yeah. like, but you know, it's because that's, you know, we all have this world, that's what we're looking at. And, and, you know, because it's not only just certain things that could be pretty that are beautiful, you know, some people like darker art. Mm. And so I was thinking like, you know what if what if you lived in um you know, a cave or <laughs> yeah yeah or the or the forest or something yeah. you know like 
like you might still see like the crystals of the you know the water dripping and stalagmites you know you might think that's beautiful even though compared to like a sunny day and flowers blooming you know that might not seem as as technically beautiful so but i was just i was kind of going back and forth in my mind thinking like well a lot of times maybe beauty beauty to sort of extend over you know like to unify what people think is beautiful i was thinking well you know maybe it's it's youth and help healthy living things mm -hmm. and growing and development because you know if you think of some things that are are sad or like horrifying or something mm -hmm. it tends to usually have to do with like you know death or or things wilting and mm -hmm. you know so so i would say that um that like my first thought is that maybe that's what unifies what people think beautiful is like is like freshness and possibility mm -hmm. but then on the other hand you know again to go with beauty's an eye of the beholder it's just that you know if you if you view other things in a more beautiful light you know you could always see the beauty in something that might not be you know even even if you see um you know a painting of of a you know someone who's passed away or mm -hmm. something if if you view it in a different light like maybe you think it of it as a new beginning to a you know different world or something mm -hmm. then then you could view that as as possibly beautiful mm -hmm. as well so okay yes but what mm -hmm. is beauty what is it that's that's the question. <laughs> that's the question indeed. Uh, that's. I mean, again, thinking about it, I tend to think. I tend to think of what beauty does more, mm -hmm. and for me, again, it it, it creates such a, such a powerful emotion mm -hmm. that. Um, it makes me want to like somehow do something to sort of quiet that like somehow take part in something yeah like um so so at one point um well, let me think so i i went to to a, a an Arcadia contemporary show over mm -hmm. the summer. Okay. And I was kind of, I was, I mean, it, it could kind of fall under envy too, but, but I was just so like, it was such a beautiful show of all this artwork that I was just, you know, like my stomach clenched on my yeah. almost felt, almost felt sick. I was, cause it was just, I was just so like, I wanted to be part of it, mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I would tell that to people <laughs> at the show, and they, they're just like Stephanie, just you know, don't be envious, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, quash those emotions, you know. <laughs> but I was like, it was, it was hitting me so like so hard that I was just like <laughs> walking around like oh, like it was all the work was so beautiful, like everyone had their unique style and everything was so beautiful to me. Um, but it did, it did lead me to, I was talking to um, the director about, um, like, ha about how beautiful the show was. And then I showed him some of my work and he actually, he said, oh, you can be in the next show here, uh -huh. like in, in the five and under next year. Yeah, yeah. So, so I was, you know, I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is a dream come true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's but, awesome. Um, yeah, five so and, I five, was... Five and under, what does that mean? You know, and, and like just... Oh, like 5,000 and under. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, so okay, okay. I okay, guess, okay, yes. you know, it's a, group, it's a group show. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so, so that, like, that immediately, like, I, I did feel better. Like, uh -huh. I, could, I wasn't as, like, like just like dying but but anyway so so anyway so the thing is okay about beauty and inspiration i just i feel like beauty 
leads to something now like if it were a relationship or something if you saw like a i mean i hate to be like superficial <laughs> but <laughs> but if you saw someone who was was very attractive and you were taken by like the beauty of the person you know it might lead you to go over and like talk to the person yeah yeah or um so i just feel like it has it has the beauty sort of like sparks like inspiration mm -hmm. you know if you see a beautiful landscape you might want to capture it and paint it um so i think it has you know it's a useful it's it's good for that now what it is again i think it's i think people can have you know based on their experiences and their preferences i think that i do think that people have their own view of what is what is beautiful mm. so sure um yeah i mean i don't i don't think uh, i don't think that's shallow at all mm -hmm. uh the thing about you know what an attractive person uh the feelings that an attractive person calls up in the viewer of the attractive person um and um I really enjoy the honesty <laughs> mm -hmm. about what uh, your feelings when you were in that show, and I completely, um, I completely understand. Uh, it's hap it, ha it has happened to me once, which is actually in contrast with what I was saying about the feeling elicited in the studio environment in at the academy. Because mm -hmm. after I graduated, a classmate had a show mm -hmm. uh, that the person got a solo show, mm -hmm. and. Um, and you know, I don't, I don't have a, I don't, I don't have a feeling of competition with them or anything. It's like our right. work, our work isn't similar or anything. But they got a yeah. solo show in New York, and I was like, it's like, um, you know, I, I didn't even necessarily like their work or anything. It was just like the idea of them having a show, and and well, it's not, it's not something necessarily inspired by, brought up by the beauty of something. Like in your case, in my case, it was just like, uh, I was just like up at. I don't know, like oh, four in the froze. morning. Can you hear me still? Oh yeah, it yeah, froze okay. for a, a minute, a second, but yes, I okay, can see you so, again. Yeah, right. so like I was like up, feeling just sitting in green envy at like four in the morning. I couldn't sleep mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. this person had a show, you know. And it's mm -hmm. like, you know, that can that probably looks bad, but at the same time, it's like, all right, if you really want something, then try to get it for your damn self, <laughs> like you did. You know, you right. went, you were talking to the director right. guy and you were like, oh, this is my work. And he mm -hmm. was like, oh, my God, you should be in the next one. You know, and then yeah. it's like, yeah, you know, if you want a thing, then you go and get try to get it, try to work for it and get it, you know. And, and uh, actually, yeah. Oh, no. Go yeah, ahead, sorry. And, and actually, like that had happened to one of my friends, um, like maybe a couple months before hmm. the same similar type of thing. She showed um, him his work, her work and. Um, and she was gonna she was in that show so at that point too i was like oh this is i mean this it's really been my dream i've loved this gallery since like 2000 um so and i you know i've i submitted my portfolio a couple of times in the past mm -hmm. um but actually just well and then um but but when she, when i saw that she was able to you know, get in at least, you know, show her work in the group show. Um, like I, I got determined, I was like, okay, that's it. I'm going to start a new body of work. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, it's, so it, it sort of, it really did inspire, it motivated me to start like, you know, getting things in order instead of just yeah. doing one-off um, little portrait sketches, you know, I, I sort of envisioned like the direction, like a new body of work. Mm. Oh. that's awesome yeah what a what a, a way to have a positive encouraging spin on something that is generally uh shown as a negative thing um and you know the same thing can definitely be said for any kind of other any kind of other ideal because it's like for mm -hmm. the attractive person that we were whomever that is uh mm -hmm. whomever that might be it's like you know maybe that person makes the viewer the person that's looking at them maybe it makes them you know you're attracted to them but at the same time maybe one would like to become 
what they would also find attractive and it's like oh it you know makes you want to go to the gym or like be really healthy and right. then you find this whole other world of taking care of yourself in that way and then it's yeah. like you know that kind of um that and any that kind of ideal because mm -hmm. um i just feel like it's very in vogue it's trendy right now to to be like no you're perfect you don't have to do anything to be better mm -hmm. because it's that's overrated or whatever and it's like it's really not it's like chasing after something that you like or that you want is really good for the individual it's like because right. then you know you discover stuff about yourself and you start doing good things for yourself actually, very often <laughs> actually i i i i heard something on the radio similar to that um and it's like if if you and the woman was saying um i forget who in the context exactly but it was like if you get that if you feel that strongly like oh oh i think it, i think she was she had one profession mm. and she she realized that like when she was listening to um someone talk about like writing a book she, mm. she got hit with like like oh i that's what she like she wanted to do that mm -hmm. so she listened to her her emotion now it's not like um you know, and she ends up, you know, writing a book and, and mm -hmm. it's successful. So I, I think the thing is that you have to listen to yourself. And if you yeah. have, if you, if you hate like such strong emotion, you know, you have to figure out what you're doing in, in your life so that you're able to sort of like follow that a bit. Yeah, or, for sure. You know, you, you need to listen to it just to see like, well, maybe that's what I should be doing or, yeah. you know, and. And I think like what you're saying too, is if you, you know, if you look at a fashion model maybe, and you're just like, oh, they're so fit. And, you know, I guess you could have used that inspiration to like, you know, just sort of make yourself better and like work out more. Yeah. Something. Pick super um, nice clothes or, you know, like polish your wardrobe or yeah. explore. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, all right. Well, uh, I like this place for mm -hmm. this, these final thoughts for, for closing it out, because that is also a facet of beauty, mm -hmm. like the beauty being an ideal that inspires us to chase mm -hmm. after that ideal, mm -hmm. whatever that might mean for the person. Right. So, all right. Um, uh, Stephanie, please tell mm -hmm. our viewers and listeners mm -hmm. what you're up to lately and where your work can be found. So lately I am, I'm working more with the figures um, I hope to go more in that direction. Some of the paintings are behind me. So my work can be found. Um, I mostly, I, I post most on Instagram. Um, that's where my most recent work is usually. And that's my, um, my name is Stephanie Desch. It's my username. The handle, yes. Mm -hmm. The handle. And, um, and also my website, you can check that out for um, if I have any upcoming workshops. I do some online workshops too. Okay. And that's stephaniedeshfonde.com. Okay. All right. So both those things will well, be in the video description, mm -hmm. linked in the video description. Okay. So thank you, okay. Stephanie, very much for right. joining me. Thanks uh, so much. It, sure. was, it went by fast. <laughs> it, really, it really did. <laughs> it really did, which which uh, says yeah. it's good about the, it speaks well of the conversation because it was a good conversation. So oh, thank you for good. your time. Thank you for your words and your thoughts. Yeah. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Feel free to let Stephanie and I know what you think of this conversation in the comment section. And I also invite you to subscribe to my audiovisual channel because more of these conversations are coming. I also invite you to like this video and share it with any and all pertinent individuals. If you want to support Stephanie, myself, this podcast, or all three, the links will be in the video description below. And uh, thanks again, and see you next time. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye.